If you're an old head like me, you'll be realising that your eyes aren't what they once were. I find it hard to see what I'm soldering these days, but luckily Tom Love have sent me this microscope. And I'm going to review it right now. Mark Fixes Stuff So let's have a look what's in the box. First impressions are it's really well packed. Inside we have a manual. Now we don't usually do manuals on this channel, but I've had a look through this one and it's pretty good actually. Underneath the manual we find the screen nestled safely in some foam packing. Now this is quite a big unit and it's much bigger than I expected. That really is a rather large screen. Let's see what else is in the box. Okay, so we have a foreign power adapter, which I'm clearly not going to be using. We have what looks like a box of, are they lenses? Yep, they're lenses. That looks like a slide adapter for a microscope. I'm going to be honest, I'm probably not going to use that today. Um, if you want me to demo that, drop me a comment below. Inside the lens box, I can see there's two lenses and this is lens L, this is lens D. We'll come back to those in a moment. Spare arms for the slide holder. It's nice to see spares. A screwdriver I'll never use and some spare parts. Right deep in the packing we find what looks like a remote control and that does look really full featured so that's nice. Let's get rid of all this stuff so we can have a look at the main unit. So it's Tom Love branded. I have seen others that look like this but this one apparently boasts a 2K HDMI output. And as I'd guessed it's a 7 incher. In new money, seven inches equates to roughly about 17 and a bit centimeters. Inside the box, we have what looks like a big aluminium shaft. No surprises there. And it's got the usual attachment on the end for screwing into the base. This is a mini HDMI to full HDMI cable. This is actually what I'm most excited about with this microscope. I know what that is, I'll put it to one side. Next we have a single micro USB cable, presumably for connecting to the computer. And we have a power micro USB cable with an on off switch that controls the microscope and brightness for the LEDs that are built into the base. And finally the base itself and this is quite a weighty beast. So let's just take stock of what we've got in the box. All the bits we need to build the microscope and a power adapter that I wouldn't plug in if you paid me. Okay, that base looks really nice with that black finish. Hmm, I like it. And these LED lights will be really handy, although it's very bright in the studio. Let's screw the shaft into the socket. All your base are belong to me. It's the usual arrangement on these microscopes. You screw it until it's almost done and then you finish it off with your fingers. Nice and tight. Although you never really can get these super tight to be honest. Okay, so that's together. What's next? The screen. Now look at this. What a massive unit. I've noticed it's got a lens pre-installed, which is nice. Lens A, general purpose, or the queen lens as they call it. There's the focusing wheel. 
It's nice that they've put the object focusing distance on the lenses. It really helps you choose the right lens for the task at hand. Looking around the back of the unit, we can see that we've got the mini HDMI, the micro USB, and the micro SD slot. The micro SD was actually included. These things are so fiddly, but this is a Kyoxa Xera 64 gigabyte. And this is a brand that you often get with 3D printers. I've never had any problems with them. So um, maybe that's a premium brand. I don't know. There's two screws installed on the stand, which are meant to grip the microscope. And they seem to have some kind of rubbery plastic on the end, which is nice. Let's get the microscope into this. Although I can see a little bit of a problem. With the lens installed, it's definitely not going in, so I think we need to remove the lens before we can put the microscope unit actually into the stand. It's simple to remove the lenses, but considering they're very light, these screws are incredibly long. And that's quite a nice view of the sensor, so let's see if we can get a close-up of that it's actually protected by a piece of glass, which is good. We definitely don't want any dust ingress in that. I couldn't begin to guess who makes this sensor, but it looks pretty large. And it looks decent enough quality, so I'm holding out high hopes for this. Not sure if this is enough, but we'll just try it this way. I have noticed that there's a groove in the holder for the front of the microscope, which is really handy to stop it spinning around. And no, it's not dropping into place, so I think I'm going to have to unscrew these screws a little bit more. There we go. I'm dying to peel this off. Come on YouTube, it's time for the satisfying peel. Looking at the lens that was installed, it's mainly plastic apart from some brass in the middle and what looks like some brass inserts for the screws which hold it onto the microscope. Let's have a look in the box. So this is lens L, which they call the soldering and circuit board inspection lens. That's the one we're going to be really mostly using today because it's got quite a large working distance. The other lens in the box is called lens D and that's got a really small working distance and that's for the slide box that we saw earlier. I'm really not interested in this. I'm not a fan of bugs and I don't want to look at them up close, thanks. If you really want me to look at bugs, leave a comment in the comment section below and if it gets 100 likes I'll do it. Speaking of which, I've seen these before. This is a samples box and you've seen these in shows like Dexter where he keeps his blood trophies. Okay, let's have a look at a couple. First up is a honeybee wing and considering the importance of bees to the ecosystem, why is its wing in here? Next, we've got what looks like a clear blue pregnancy test. And then a little tiny drosophila. I have no idea what that means. Okay, that's more than enough, thank you. I'm feeling really gross. I don't want to eat my lunch now. Thanks, YouTube. But no more. During this review, I'm going to be simulating what I would do normally with the microscope to see if it's actually useful for me. The nice thing about this lens is that with an object distance of 90mm to 300mm, there's a lot of room for me to work underneath with the soldering iron. Next we need to power the unit. This is done using a USB cable, and I'm going to plug it into a known working power brick. Micro SD goes into the back of the microscope unit. This barrel jack goes into the base for the LED lights. And I'm going to be using this USB 2 amp 5 volt power supply that I bought from CPC Farnell because I don't want to burn my house down again. 
Tom Love logo pops up on the screen and we are ready to rock and roll. And I thought we'd have a look at the Amiga board that I put through the ultrasonic cleaner. This is a really good real world test. It's the kind of thing that I'd be doing anyway. I'm also curious to see if there's any lifted pads or damage that's occurred from the ultrasonic cleaning or any cap leakage that might have happened earlier in its life. I'm lucky enough to have really bright filming lights, but these LEDs on these poseable stalks are really handy for getting the light on the components that you want to inspect. And that does make a great deal of difference actually. Let's see how far we can go down and still focus. With quite a considerable distance left for working between the lens and the board, it's almost too zoomed in to be able to do any work, but great for inspection anyway. You'd definitely be able to see any problems on a board with this scope. And this screen is absolutely beautiful. In fact, the footage I've taken here doesn't do it justice because the background lighting for filming makes it seem a little bit duller than it really is. Before this board went into the ultrasonic cleaner, it had had capacitor leakage and it had been through a house fire. So I'm looking for any pad damage that might have been either caused by the cap leakage or caused by the ultrasonic cavitation. For scale, this is my three millimeter soldering iron tip. I really look after my tip, but it looks a bit abused here. I'm not sure if a bit of the plating of this fire has gone, but I can see a little bit of damage to the solder mask and I suspect that was cavitation. It's not capacitor leakage in this area for sure. One thing I always like to look at is the cell structure inside the EEPROMs. I find these fascinating and under the microscope, well, they're incredible looking. It's crazy to think that this device is 30 years old. But now the feature I'm most excited about. I'm hoping that when I plug in this HDMI cable to my monitor, I'll be able to view a 2K image from this microscope. This monitor is 28 inches, so that means it will fit perfectly with the stated magnification of the microscope. And it works. Incredible. Now this is a game changer for me. My eyes are absolutely terrible. And with a tool like this, I'll be able to inspect boards very quickly. The built-in screen is incredible, but having a large monitor like this really helps you to see the fine detail, including this, what looks like a pad that has been lifted by alkaline leakage. Just knowing this is here is really useful. On the monitor is great, but I make videos. Now I could split this to my 4K capture card, but I'm curious what the internal recording is like. So I'm going to make a few samples and drop them in here. This is using the slide lens. I actually found that it was really useful for close up inspection. The detail is incredible, a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels. Switching to the L lens and dropping down to 1920 by 1080 pixels, we can work at 60 frames per second, which still looks really good and gives a very smooth working experience. And going back to the slide lens at 1920 by 1080, well, would you look at the detail of the cells of this EEPROM? Absolutely gorgeous. So although I complained a bit about the uh, slide box and the bugs, actually I've found this D lens to be really good. I'm still not looking at bugs though. Quick look at the menu. So you've got resolution. And there's lots of options here. You know what resolutions are, I'm not going to explain them all to you. There's also options for exposure. You can date stamp your video or picture, increase or decrease the sharpness, freeze the image, adjust the contrast or the color. Although most of these options are available directly on the remote control, so you don't really need to go into the menu. I found the default settings to be fine. One weird thing I found was you can change the color from normal to black and white. sepia or even negative literally no clue why in the secondary menu there's options like setting up some grids for your screen if that's your thing and then you've got all the basic stuff like date and time and language 
One thing that is interesting is you can change the frequency between 50 Hz and 60 Hz output, which is nice. You can format your SD card or reset the microscope to default settings or view the version. Now this wouldn't be a Mark Fix's stuff review unless I had something negative to say. I really don't like the 2880x2160p mode. At 24 frames per second it feels really really laggy, but it's hard to mic down this fantastic microscope for that. It could just be me being oversensitive as well. Overall, I love this. This tool is going to give me a new lease of life for inspecting and soldering. So thanks so much to Tom Love for sending it in. It's a big thumbs up from me. And a big thumbs up to my amazing patrons appearing on the screen right now. My patrons keep this channel going and you can join them at patreon.com forward slash stuff. Patrons get ad-free early access to all my videos and they also get access to my exclusive patron blogs where you can see behind the scenes at Mark Fix's stuff or you can choose to ignore that if you don't want to see behind the scenes. I can understand how that would be a bit weird. Seeing as you've watched this far, why don't you watch one of these videos? Go on. Go on. <laughs>